legs. I didn't think about the legs. It doesn't fit under. Oh no. Should I just drop you here and then pull you back? Yeah, I guess so. There we go. Cool. Is that comfortable? Yeah, I'm actually really comfortable. Really? It's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure the cut cushion's on your booty. Cool. Yeah, well, we put a cushion down under my buttocks. Yes. So I wouldn't be sitting on the hard floor, but uh, we're preparing for floor time. I wanted to see how Cole felt on the floor. So when he gets on the floor with our baby, just to kind of have, see how that'll be. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> we are about to leave on a trip for 15 days. Yeah, it's a long one, which always means that there's a flurry of activity before we leave, because there's lots of things that we, we have a bit of a routine mm -hmm. before we go on any trips. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that routine is packing. We just have a certain approach to traveling now that we've done it for so long. Yes. So we've taken a bunch of questions from people. Yeah, we get a lot of questions when it comes to disabled traveling and yeah. our experience, and everyone knows we travel all the time. So we wanted to answer some questions and show you our top essential travel items uh, for us as a couple and then Cole's um, spinal cord injury specifically too. I feel so chill right now. I know, you look so comfortable. <laughs> just lounging, man. Well, the first question is pertinent because we were just talking about this. Um, we were talking about it like a couple days ago. That's true. <laughs> Will you be able to travel with Sophie and a baby? That is a really good question that we just don't know the answer to right now. I don't yeah. think so. We, we've talked about this a lot, mm -hmm. and I think the only way it would work is if we had someone travel with us. Yeah, yeah. but like tra traveling with a baby under one or even under two in a dog seems like a lot. Yeah, taking a road trip down to like San Diego, a two hour road trip, I think we could do that for sure. Yeah. Flying though would be a challenge. It's also hard because we don't know what our baby's gonna be like. Our baby could be super chill or our baby could not be super chill. We have no idea. Well, flying is really tough on everyone. If you think about your ears popping flying, a baby doesn't know what that sensation is. So they'd yeah. be really bothered by the noise and everything happening. So I don't know. Yeah. And we've been doing so much traveling that, you know, I'm frankly, I'm okay with hanging out, staying at home with the baby for a couple of years. Same. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's fine. If, like everyone come visit us. I don't know how yeah. it's going to be a while before we travel with our baby. <laughs> but uh, there's another question that kind of is also talking about Sophie. Yeah. 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 Why does Sophie only come sometimes? That's a good question. I've seen that question come up a bunch. Everyone knows Sophie is Cole's service dog. And mm -hmm. yes, she does service Cole. She can pick up stuff for Cole. So if he drops something on the floor, she can pick it up and put it in his lap. And then the other thing is alerting me or someone um, if Cole falls and he's alone or if something happens, she can alert. Um, but the main thing was picking up things for you. Yeah, she's gotten really good at that, which is great. Mm -hmm. She's laying right here with us. You know, frankly, I know it's not necessarily a service task, but the emotional support it means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, but she does not come with us everywhere we go. Uh, a lot of the trips we go on are like business or work related and um, it would just be much more challenging and we don't feel like we'd be able to deliver what we're supposed to be delivering as professionals if we had Sophie there with us like mm -hmm. and we wouldn't want to have to leave her behind at a hotel or stuff like it's just sometimes it's more ideal for us to just go take the trip on our own get it done with and come back as soon as possible. Sophie's purpose is to help Cole when he doesn't have someone else. So on trips, I'm with him or someone's with him. So he doesn't really need a hand with things. Mm -hmm. But when he's in an apartment by himself or even running to Target by himself, that's when she is at best use. So Cole can be independent, have some someone to pick up things when he drops it because that happens often. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, we, so when we go on trips, I'm there and we don't necessarily need her, so it's just kind of extra. But whenever we go home, she flies with us. And she's great on planes. She's she really good. lays down, mm -hmm. sleeps, super quiet. Most of the time people don't even know she's there. No. She's so good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this one, how do you avoid pressure sores on flight? Good question. Basically what Cole's doing now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say, yeah. I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have these cushions that you can buy online. So um, kind of like this. Yeah. This one, this one's from Amazon. It's a much thinner one than Cole uses. Yeah, the one I'm sitting on now, which is the one I actually, it, which is the one I actually use on planes, is much thicker. It's over double this. 
Yeah. It's okay. much thicker. It's a purple cushion. So we just went on the purple website and found a cushion, ordered their purple cushion, and then we put an extra layer of cushion in it. I like it because it, it's thick enough that it provides me all the support my booty needs, mm -hmm. but it's not so thick that like I'm sitting up really tall in the, the plane chair. I'm already tall, so if I had my wheelchair cushion on the plane seat, I'd be, my head would be like this far above the back of the seat. I'd, I'd be so tippily and toppily. And so. Cole's wheelchair cushion is much longer than the seat. Mm -hmm. And so it just isn't a good fit. But this cushion, it fits in the seat perfectly. At first we were like, oh, a two hour or less flight, Cole can sit on the seat, but it, no, let's not, we don't want to risk it. It's just so easy to bring and throw down and then transfer on top of it and you're good. Yeah, and Cole weight shifts a lot. Yeah, do my leans forward, sideways, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So this question says, do you plan your trips or do you use an agency? We've never used an agency, so never use it. But a lot of times we fly for a business purpose, like a speaking engagement mm -hmm. or a brand wants to host us as, at an event and they usually fly us out. Um, so they'll book us the tickets, but I always go in the back end and make sure the flight is taken care of, Cole's wheelchair needs are met, and they know that he's in a wheelchair and will need assistance. And then the hotel, I always go back and make sure the hotel is a rolling shower. So I always double check, and our manager is really good at telling the brands or whoever is booking the flight for us or the trip all of the things that we need, everything that's mandatory. But I always go back and double check. Yeah, Charisma does a really good job with that. And I think what helps is specificity. Mm -hmm. The more specific you can get with all of your plans and all your trips and stuff, mm -hmm. um, the better off you'll be. Because if you're not specific, people will not get it. No. You have to be very clear and very forward. Yeah. And, uh, and that's worked well for us. Mm -hmm. It has that's worked good. really well. All right, staying on the theme of flying, has Cole's wheelchair ever been damaged? And are certain airlines better than others? Good question. So the first one, my chair has been damaged. Mm -hmm. It's never been like destroyed, but I've had like the tread on my tire almost pulled off. Mm -hmm. A lot of times like my rib grips will come off the wheels, but we can just put those back on pretty easily. Mm -hmm. We glued them now, so now they don't come off. Yeah, some, some like dents and scratches here and there, but I'm very fortunate that I haven't had any like real crises. Well, especially with this chair, this chair is a lot lighter than his previous wheelchair. Yeah. Also, Cole's never flown with the power chair. So that's something to note. I have not. Like, I'm kind of scared to because that's who, I always hear from other power wheelchair users about their experiences getting their chairs damaged. And I'm like, man, I'm just so scared. Yeah, so we just avoid that. And we're fortunate yeah. that we can avoid going with the power chair. Yeah. Are certain airlines better than others? When it comes to like chair care, I don't really know that there's a noticeable difference. They're pretty equal when it comes to that. And when it comes yeah. to transferring on and off the plane, it, it's it's the airlines, the airport staffing, not the airline specifically sometimes. Yeah. So it depends on the airport. Our Richmond back at home airport actually has specific staff for specific airlines, but I noticed that all, not all airports are like that. Yeah, it really depends on the customer service of whoever you're working with. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to give you the time to like listen to you about what you need. They're yeah. just like rushing along and then other people will like really listen. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that there's any airline better than others. In terms of the entire experience on an airline besides the disability, I think Delta is my favorite. As an airline, I just, we just really like Delta. We used to fly United all the time. Um, United's fine, but Delta just has better customer service, better flight attendants, I think. No, don't think United's bad, but I just like Delta a lot more. Yeah, we just had good experience, honestly, yeah. flying. We were really fortunate. Yeah, and also we've figured out a new strategy with the chair that has made the experience safer for my chair. And that is, we know that they have a space on the plane, and this should be every plane, mm -hmm. for a wheelchair. Yes. That being said, it only fits like a standard wheelchair. My chair is not a standard wheelchair, but we can still use that space by taking off the wheels, which are the most expensive and most important part of my chair, and then putting them in the closet. So that's what Charisma does, is after they get me out of the chair, she rips off the, well not rips off, <laughs> she delicately takes off the wheels, puts them in the closet, and then that way all they have to pack underneath the plane is the frame of the chair, which is very durable. Yes. So that's not going to get destroyed unless 
I don't know, something tragic must happen. So that's been working really well for us. It is extra effort on Charisma's part, mm -hmm. but um, we know for a fact that my chair is not gonna be destroyed. Some mm. closets are bigger than others, but e every plane is required to have one closet for wheelchairs. Like that's a absolute. So you just have to ask the flight attendants, let them know that's what you wanna do. But like Cole said, I just take off the chairs, the cushion, and then the anti-tippers. And then Cole's chair actually folds down, so I fold it down for them buckle the seatbelt over it so it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. come undone. So all they have to do is carry it. And it's like a 30 pound frame after that. So they shouldn't damage it. <laughs> yeah. So that's been going well. Mm -hmm. The other thing, and this is one of the other questions, are they gentle when transferring you to the aisle chair and plane seat? Mm. So something else we've done to make the process smoother is Charisma could use the sliding board and transfer me onto the aisle chair and then onto the plane seat pretty easily mm -hmm. um, as long as the plane seat has an armrest that can either like slide down or fold back and they should and they should then a sliding board transfer is like very level it, it works better because we know how to work our bodies together we got a lot of practice in that arena if you know what i'm talking about <laughs> um, and that's been really good for us because yeah. the the transfers can really be hit or miss and we've some, had some bad ones exactly and sometimes they said one person or they said people that clearly cannot two-man lift Cole and so it's just been easier for me to just use a side board and Cole helps a lot like remember guys I'm not doing 100% of the transfers myself Cole does a lot of the transfers he can push with his sorry he can push with his arms and he lifts his butt up so it's literally like sliding a sheet it's so easy sure it puts a lot more work on me but we don't fly we're not flying every week, so it doesn't become super draining, you know? We just found it easier. We don't have to rely on a transfer team when we do it that way, but it's that's tough. For people who need the transfer team, it is tough to find people who really know what they're doing um, and who understand you when you're telling them exactly how to lift you. I will say, if you require the transfer team, be assertive be aggressive be, be, be assertive aggressive. <laughs> uh, yeah be assertive don't let them rush you mm -hmm. tell them exactly how they should transfer you how yep. they should handle you exactly what you need because i know in those moments i felt this myself it's like you feel all this pressure to like go really fast and they're like move in I know. and then all of a sudden they're doing this like terrible transfer picking up my arms like this and i'm like yeah like stop let's stop this is how you do it yeah and that's always a smoother process when you're mm -hmm. when i'm just assertive with them i think we put the pressure on ourselves that we have to rush because i always feel bad making everyone wait for us to get on the plane but never feel that way the flight attendants are usually so kind mm -hmm. and so patient they're always like take your time sweetie i'm always running i'm always running every time we go on the plane i'm like running back and forth sweating and they're like take your time ma'am we're not in a rush here. We got plenty of time. And I'm like, I know, I just feel bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, take your time. There's no need to rush. Yeah. You really do have time. And it feels like it may be taking forever, but it's really not. Okay, so this next question we get a lot um, is how does Cole go to the bathroom on a plane? Yeah, everywhere, all over the place. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it, sometimes it's kind of awkward because yeah. I have to help give Cole an IC because he doesn't have the tools to give himself an IC on the plane. Plus, if he gave himself an IC, he would be showing everything and I can do it way more discreetly. We just do it in the seat. Cole has a closed system into the bag and then I take it to the bathroom and do it. Yeah. So we just get a blanket, yeah. throw it on top. Sometimes we people stare <laughs> Yeah. and I'm like, they must think I'm doing something naughty over here, but really I'm just helping my husband pee. Most of the time it's nothing naughty. Um, <laughs> it's never anything <laughs> naughty. We try to be conspicuous about it, but like there's no getting around. Yeah, especially when the flight attendants, like we're trying to do our thing and the flight attendants just happen to come around. We're like, I know. We're like, do you need anything? Are you okay? Does he have to go to the bathroom? We're like, we're good, please just go. Like the recent flight, the flight I attendant remember. kept coming back and I'm like, Cole, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. He keeps coming back. So do you need to go to the bathroom? Is that, is that what's happening We here? have a chair, we can get yeah. him. We have a wheelchair, we can get you to the bathroom. And I was like, that's not gonna work. <laughs> it's, it's not, I appreciate it, but yeah. we're gonna do our thing here. Yeah. And we did, and it was fine. Those of you who do ICs or in a, to a closed bag, it can be awkward, but do what you gotta do. People, once they understand, if they understood what you were doing, they would respect it. So we just try to ignore people and just do it. And I just do it at the same time, I have to go to the bathroom too. So I'm not getting up a million times. Yeah, that mm -hmm. works out nicely. Yeah. 
Is there anything fellow travelers or airplane passengers can do to help or at least offer? That's a good question. I think the biggest thing is hurry up. <laughs> Get off the freaking plane. No. Oh my God. <laughs> you wait forever, dude. I know. It's so funny sometimes. So Cole is always the last one off the plane. He's the first one on. So we ha when we we're, get on. We're the first one on. Sorry. We're the first <laughs> one on me. the plane, which means we have to wait for everyone to load. So we're sitting there watching everyone walk past us. And then we're the first, last one off the plane. So we have to wait for everyone to get off the plane before Cole can even get off the plane. And some people just take their time. Oh my gosh. Like, seriously, take their time. And we can't leave. And I'm just looking at y'all, them like, look at, like, some people are like, literally on their phone, not even paying attention. I'm like, go. Get off the plane. And Cole can't see how many people, so I'm always updating. There's about 30 yeah. more people back there. <laughs> if you notice a wheelchair user getting on the plane, just know that <laughs> they have to wait until you are all off before. So yeah. that's why connecting flights are so scary because it's not like we can get off right away and find our connecting flight. We have to wait for everyone to get off. Yeah, and that, that was one of the other questions. How do you deal with layovers? Mm -hmm. And frankly, we just try to avoid them as yeah. much as we can mm -hmm. because all of the transfers, all of the airport running around, it's all a lot. Mm -hmm. So we try to minimize what we have to do. And if that means we have to get on a flight at 4 a.m. so that we can get catch a nonstop flight rather than like, leaving at 8 a.m. and having to stop somewhere, we're gonna leave at 4 a.m. Yep. Because, yeah, transfers, uh, just, it adds so much mm -hmm. to the, the whole travel day. It does, and you cannot fly straight flight into Richmond, which is where we live. So we fly into Dulles or Reagan, which is in D.C., and drive two hours because we just don't wanna do a connecting. We'd rather drive two hours than to do a connecting flight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would take us longer yeah, to fly. Exactly. And there are less tra transfers and less risk of Cole's wheelchair getting damaged. So that's why we do it. We just try to minimize that. Yeah. The last airport themed question. How do you, or how is it getting through security at the airport? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, initially, <laughs> we were not prepared. And so I would go through the standard line and they would have to give me the full body pat down. Obviously, the metal detector is not going to work for me. Yeah. Um, so they got to give, they got to touch everything. And when I mean everything, I'm talking everything. They're in there. It's invasive. I mean, here's a, a, a clip here of just how invasive it can be. So the solution to that was to get pre check. Yes. And pre check has been awesome. All they really do is like wipe my hands for and, bomb residue. Yeah. So as long as there's no bomb residue on my hands, which I get worried about sometimes pushing my chair if there's something on the ground. I know, you know, I know. <laughs> they, it's really quick. It's like a quick little wipe down and then mm -hmm. I'm through. It's super easy. It's way faster. So I recommend TSA pre-check for if you're disabled. Seriously, yeah. it's the best thing. It's much recommend faster. It. For recommend everyone. It for everyone. Seriously, yeah. for everyone. And if you have a Venture Capital One card, uh, it's for free. So you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. That is not sponsored. I'm just letting y'all know. I was about to say, we should get sponsored by the pre-check we're gonna <laughs> TSA, hit us up. <laughs> Another thing that we just got was clear, which you don't like, you just kind of jump the lines. It's basically getting us through faster because Cole and I do not like to get to the airport early. We want to get to the airport, get through, board within 10 minutes. We do not like sitting around at the airports. I just, I get too anxious flying that I don't have time to just be sitting there thinking about this flight. So this is going to be great. It'll really get us through faster. So clear, TSA pre check, do it. This one is a good question. This one says, do you travel with a commode shower ch slash shower chair? And then how do you deal with packing all your medical supplies? So Cole has a shower chair mm -hmm. that is portable. So I just have to put it together and break it down when we're traveling. If we're at a hotel for a long time, for a couple of days, it's easy. But when we're like, when we took the Alaska trip and we were switching hotel every single day, it's annoying to break it down and put it up a lot. But once yeah. you have it up, it's fine. Um, and it's easy, it's super easy, it comes in a suitcase. It's kind of small, well I'm just large. <laughs> so I just don't feel like the most secure in it, so it's not the most comfortable chair. Yeah. But so far it's been functional, it's gotten the job done for us, so. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten really good at packing our medical, Cole's medical supplies. Well there are only a few things. For my nighttime routine, I need a straight catheter. This is uh, going to, s did you just put your hand up on it? Yeah, I was like, oh, You're so you far away. That? Yeah, no. So here's a straight cath. So my nighttime setup, I have a straight cath that just stays indwelling, uh, a condom catheter, which helps hold this on or hold it in place. 
and we attach that to a bed, bed bag. bag. Yeah. So with that, it's three items. Here's the bed bag. And so the straight calf attaches to this part here. Yeah. So this is really important because we don't want to have to wake up throughout the night and do ICs, mm -hmm. um, especially when we're on the road, we want to rest. So mm -hmm. um, the times that I've forgotten the bed bag uh, has sucked. Um, yeah, the times where we don't have that, it sucks because we have to wake up every two hours for Cole to use the bathroom. Yeah, I don't hold <laughs> volume very well when I'm laying down. No. I always bring a ton of my IC kits. So this is what we're, we use on the plane, what Cole uses all the time, mm -hmm. and it holds the fluid, so it never leaks out of the bag. For this trip, I'm gonna bring like 70 of those, mm -hmm. a lot. Another big essential item, sliding board. We always bring a sliding board every single trip. It never fails. As yeah. well as a sheet for the shower chair. It, his butt slides easier because it's bare butt. You don't want it sliding on this, so it slides better on a sheet. Yeah, Ooh, that gave me the chills thinking about, <laughs> oh, get the splinters in my food. And then all my bowel supplies stuff. Yeah. So all the little mini enemas that we need, <laughs> all the gloves, all the lube. lube. Um, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And then Cole's medicine. He takes multivitamin, you know, all his medicine. We bring that too. And that's all Cole needs for medical purposes. Yeah. So we're able to fit everything in the suitcase really easily. Easily. The only problem is bringing a million of these. That's what takes up so much space. Um, yeah. So we kind of put some in the suitcase, put some in my backpack. Oh, a quick little tip about a uh, medical bag. So if you have a suitcase that's full of medical equipment, it flies free. Yeah. So you don't have to pay that. You just tell them when you check it in that it's a medical bag and they will not charge you. Mm -hmm. Even if it has other stuff in it, it's still a medical bag. Yeah. So someone asked if we have travel hacks or a travel routine and we do have one thing that we do every time we travel and it's Cole's job. Well, we have two things. The, two? the first one is my job. The second one is our job. The, <laughs> the first one is I have the packing list. Yes. So I have a master list. So Cole has a legit packing list. So this is a list of all the things he makes sure we have, make sure as we have. Oh my God, our, your phone is so dirty, Cole. I'm a dirty boy. <laughs> we gotta clean that. So this has been a lifesaver because I, do, I cannot remember things very well. And every time we go somewhere and we forget something, which is there's usually one item on every trip. Eh, well, we not get, anymore. I know, but there's the list. I just added to the list. So now we don't really we struggle don't really with that as yet. much. But then the second thing is we clean the apartment. Oh, yes, yes. Such a big travel hack. Clean your house, apartment, whatever, before you go. So when you come back, you come back to a clean space, fresh sheets, everything smells good. It's so great. It's a crappy feeling to come home exhausted from a trip. And, and it's, it's just mess. like, oh, this is where we live in this pig sty. It's never that bad. No, it's not <laughs> no it, I, that's a good thing. Try it. Your next time you travel, you'll yeah. realize how great it is. It's worth it. It is. Are you concerned about traveling once charisma is pregnant? No, I, I think it'd be fine. We could just. Yeah, no, even like up to like the day before mm -hmm. she, the baby's born. Yeah. yeah, you can be sliding board transfer oh, me no. in the airport carrying a bunch of stuff. No, um, we definitely will minimize our travels. Um, I'm fine with traveling up until our right before our third trimester, but after that, I'm not traveling at all in the third trimester with Cole unless we have help. If we have someone there to help with the travel, Sure, I will do it. Not by myself, it's just a lot. And my belly's gonna get in the way. Yeah, I think we're gonna be taking it easy. We were gonna chill out on the travel for yeah. sure once. I'm really, really pregnant. All right, here's the last and final question. Which is perfect for an agent. Okay, ask me, I'm the agent, you can ask. So, Miss Travel Agent. Yes. Can you rent an accessible vehicle anywhere? Good question. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so yes, you should be able to rent in a wheelchair accessible vehicle pretty much anywhere you go. Now, if you're more in rural areas, they, that may Where? be different. Rural? Rural areas. If, you, if you're more in the countryside, it may be a little more difficult, but whenever you're traveling, you can just type in wheelchair accessible vehicles in Atlanta, Georgia, and it'll come up all the locations that you can go to to rent one. So you should be able to find one, if mm -hmm. not in the rural area, in the near city, for sure. Especially in your airports. I feel like a lot of airports have some type of rental vehicles and hopefully they have a wheelchair accessible one. I think our biggest struggle with uh, renting accessible vehicles, well, two struggles. One, they're always super expensive. Yes. Which is... Annoying. Yeah. 
They're really because they're the big vans, so they fit more yeah. people, which makes them more expensive. But the other thing is, it's not like Enterprise where you can rent a vehicle in Tennessee and then turn it in in Virginia. No. At with accessible vehicles, you got to take them back to where you got them from. So, like in our case, we like to fly somewhere and then go somewhere else, but. It's hard to plan. We, we can't really do that with an, uh, a rented accessible vehicle because we got to come back. Yeah. Um, so we've hit that hiccup a few times, but there's always one there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're renting a vehicle this trip from Mobility Works and we have it for like a week. And it wasn't, it's expensive, but it was really easy to reserve. Anyways, I'm so excited for this trip. It is a yeah. huge family cruise with the whole fam bam, my family, the Jameson clan, and we're yeah. so excited. This is the first time my family has taken, taken a trip together in like over 10 years. Anyways, yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be so much fun. And we knew once we start having babies that it's gonna be harder to travel. So we wanted to have one more, you know, big hoorah. Um, and so our kids are, I don't know, like five or something, then it will probably be easier to travel again. Yeah. Last chance to be together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I okay. hope that answered your travel questions. If you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Yes. And stay tuned for a lot of fun content coming up, y'all. Yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff happening. Yes. Especially with the house. I can't wait to get back and start get going with the house. Yes, we're not starting on the house until we get back. So yes. stick around. Stick around, y'all. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and stay, stay positive. positive. Do you want to get up and get it? I don't think I can make it over. Come on, I'll carry you. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Some feet.